Hi, welcome to the Egoja Art Studio. It's the beginning of the year and I'm thinking about all of the cloth figures that I'm going to make this year. But before I start working on all of those, I need to do one thing and that's stock up on beetles. So I have started making this year's batch of beetles and I've gotten this far. So I have all of the bodies done and now I'm at the point where I need to make all of the legs. And I've been thinking about this for years. The leg situation has never been perfect, and I talked about that in a previous video. And I've come up with a new way to make legs that I think looks better and functions a little bit better. So that's what this video is about. So I need to make about 300 legs. So let's get started. Before we make a new leg, let's take a look at my old style of leg. Uh, you can see here the, the beetle is finished and I have used these beaded wire legs and so basically it's a length of wire so each pair of legs would be one wire so the front legs is one long wire here and I would string beads on, usually bugle beads and then I would uh, crimp the, the end over into this little loop and then um, I would have some seed beads in the middle and that's where I would sew the legs onto the body. Now the problem with this kind of leg is that uh, you have the edges of the beads which are a little bit sharp, it's a little bit ungangly, it's not completely smooth, but the big issue is this loop at the end. I can never crimp it down completely flat and so often this little loop here will snag on fabrics. So if I've made something out of uh, crochet or knitted fabric, I almost always get snags and that's kind of a problem. And I get a lot of questions from people saying, you know, do you sell these beetles? It would be great if, you know, I could wear one as a pin on my coat. And I always say, you know, that would be fantastic except you're going to get the snags from this. And so I've always hesitated with that and you know, it's like, what can I do to make it better? The other thing that I didn't like is the fact that this little bit at the end doesn't match the beads. And it's kind of, I don't know, I just don't like the way it looks. It looks different. It, beetle legs get smaller at the end, not bigger. And this kind of is a little bit larger at the end. So it's like, well, what can I do? And I was thinking about it, and I decided that I would give a... a thread covered wire a try and so this was my first attempt and I actually like this it's it's not perfect but it's much better in terms of the fact that there's no snagging problem here and so for those of you that do French beaded flowers you might be familiar with what this technique is although often people will buy uh, this particular thing that I'm going to describe. So what this is is just a uh, floral wire, it's green floral wire, and I've covered it with embroidery floss and some people they will cover their wires with silk cording or silk floss which gives it a nice sheen, it doesn't matter either way it's, it's going to work just fine. Um, and then these are used for the stamens in the center of the beaded flowers and then you'd add the petals around and then you wrap everything with the floss and you get a really nice finished look. The benefit here, besides the fact that this is not going to snag on anything, this is a nice soft tip, is that I can actually bend the legs however I choose and then unbend them. I don't have to worry about the beads breaking, which would happen in the past. The legs are a little bit more maneuverable. I can still sew them on just fine here. The one downside is that they're not waterproof, uh, so that's kind of an issue. But Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this, and I think I'm going to try this for the next year or so and see how it goes. So let's get started. You're going to need some lengths of floral wire, and this is kind of hard to pick up, and you know, just your basic green stuff. You don't want the cloth covered. Um, well, I guess you could use it, but I like it kind of thin. And the key to this working is covering this pointy tip. When you see people um, making wired legs for insects, often what they'll do is they'll, they'll start in the middle and they go towards the end and then there's like this big wad of stuff at the end and so you end up getting these fat little feet at the end of a leg, which is not realistic, 
but it does serve the purpose of covering that pointy tip. What I'm going to do here is show you something that I learned long ago that I've, I've never seen anybody else do, but it's just a fantastic way to get that tip covered without all that bulk and it's relatively straightforward. So I'm just using basic embroidery floss. I'm not splitting up the threads. I'm just going to use the normal six stranded floss just as it comes off the coil. And the first thing I'm going to do is just tie a little overhand knot and I'm not going to pull it too tight because I don't want to get this uh, you know, too small. You have about a quarter of an inch of thread hanging down here and then you'll get your wire and you're going to just dip it in just a tiny bit of glue. There's hardly any there. And then you're just going to stick that end of the wire into the little divot on the knot and then you can add a little more glue and fold this end down and then I'm just going to start winding the thread. And sometimes the knot just does not want to behave and you're sitting there struggling with it and so I would say that if, if you're trying this for the first time just get it to this point and then set it aside to let that glue dry. And that's what I've done here. So I've got one here that has dried and hopefully this knot will behave. So I'm using just plain old Elmer's glue. I don't want to use tacky glue or something really thick because that actually makes it difficult to work. So then it's just as simple as uh, wrapping the thread along as you go. And of course, you know, this never works when I do it on camera. You just go along and you want to add the smallest amount of glue possible. And you just keep wrapping all the way down and what's going to happen is as you go it's actually going to push the glue out in front and that's fine. You don't want a huge amount of glue spooging out because then it, it dries badly and when you're manipulating it later it's going to form this kind of skin which looks unattractive. So what I do is I start at the end and you can see the little knot at the end and then I go to the middle and I stop and I'm going to stop at this point. So I'll add a little bit more glue just like that and then I'll trim it so we'll pretend that I've gotten to the middle here and it kind of wants to unwind a little but you just hold it and pinch it firmly and twist like so and it should stay. If it doesn't want to stay, then I would advise using my favorite little crafting tool, which are the little uh, mini plastic clothespins that you can get as like favors for uh, baby showers, but these are fantastic for holding little things. So then just set that aside to dry, and then you'll have a whole bunch depending on how many beetles you're making. And so you can see here I've got that nice soft end, it's wrapped all the way to the middle and then I'm just going to do the, the same thing on the end and wrap towards the middle again and I'll pinch and, and I'll have a little bit of a wad in the center so you can see here's one that's finished where the, the two edges have overlapped. Now here's the key. When you do it from one end to the other you'll notice that you're, you're going to find that you either go overhand, you know, clockwise or whatever, or counterclockwise. You'll, you'll figure out a way that's comfortable for you. When you do the other end, right, you'll be going from this end in, you have to go the opposite way so that the threads are actually wrapped all the same way all the way across. And that's important because when you're pinching down here to tighten everything down and you're twisting, you want to make sure that you're not going to untwist one end, which, you know, of course I started doing here because I went twisting the other way. So once you have your legs, you've got some and they're finished here, you would just get those, put them on the, the bottom of your beetle, and I do a back stitch to attach each one on. I do not glue, I prefer stitching things on. So that is it. Once you've got it then you can just bend your little legs and you know you can do whatever you want with them. They're nice and flexible. You can make each joint as long or as short as you like. 
and I think that this is going to be a big improvement and maybe I'll actually have some of the individual beetles for sale at some point in the future and they won't snag on anyone's coat. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a try and tell me what you think.